In addition to geometry, you can read and write to many properties within the parts in the Part Studio. You can modify the part name, material and density, custom properties, and variable values from a feature studio. Start a new document and create a new feature studio. Name its set values. Define the precondition. Add a string parameter for the variable name. Add a query parameter to allow the user to select parts to apply the properties to. Change the filter to entity type dot body and remove the max number of picks. Define a constant named value to get the value of the variable. Set it equal to the result of a get variable function. The get variable function gets the current value of a named variable. Use definition dot variable for the name. Next, create a constant named rounded number and set it equal to the result of a round to precision function. Without this, feature script returns a value with too many significant digits. Enter the value divided by inch for the first argument and three for the number of places. Add another constant named value string to format the value correctly for description and part name. Add static text to fill out the units and details. A double quote is a reserved character in feature script, so you must use a backslash to escape the default behavior and put it inside the string. All three of these statements could be completed in just one constant but splitting it out provides more clarity. To apply the value to all the user's selected parts, add a for loop. For the condition, use evaluate query to separate each part for the loop. Use the set property function to set the description. Set property has required parameters for entities, property type, and value. All the property types are listed in the Feature Script Standard Library documentation. It contains a list of the standard properties such as name, description, and material. Set the entity's parameter in the set property function to part, property type to description, and value to the value string. Create another set property function for the name. The parameter values are the same except property type is name. In addition to the standard properties, there is another property type for custom that is paired with the custom property ID parameter in the set property function to identify it. Custom properties are available for professional and enterprise subscriptions only. The ID for a custom property is in the property information in the company or enterprise settings. Test the feature in a part studio. Make a variable called thickness and use it to define the distance of an extrude. Add the custom feature. Once you select the part, the name automatically changes in the parts list. In the part properties, the description is also updated. It's important to note that you cannot retrieve the values of custom properties in a custom feature. This is because features are regenerated before any user set properties are applied. Professional and enterprise subscriptions can also use many of these functions to define computed part properties. Computed part properties remove the need to insert a custom feature in the part studio, but you lose the benefit of having the user enter parameters for the value. Additionally, computed part properties cannot change the part's name. Full information about how to set up computed part properties are in the Feature Script Guide. Custom tables display useful information about a part studio. It is defined at the top level like a custom feature, but can be defined in the same feature studio as other tables or features. A custom table runs on a fully generated part studio and can generate one or many tables. In this example, we will create a custom table that reports the part name, description, and vendor for each part in the part studio.
create a new document, add a custom table to a new feature studio. Start typing define table and allow Onshape to automatically complete it. It is defined very similarly to a custom feature. Rename the custom table annotation to part info. In this case, the custom table does not require any user input, but user inputs could be added to the precondition in the same way as custom features. The custom table body automatically contains arrays for the column definitions and rows. It also has a return value for the finished table. The import for geometry.fs is underlined because it can impact performance. Change it to table.fs and also add an import for common.fs. Use the table column definition function to define the columns. It takes in arguments for an ID and column header name. Optionally, you can add arguments for column alignment and entities associated with the column. Add columns for the part name, description, and vendor to the column definition array. Next, under the array declaration for the rows, define a for loop that cycles through all the parts in the part studio. To do this, use the evaluate query function with the queue all modifiable solid bodies query inside the condition. Define variables for part name, description, and vendor. The get property function allows you to grab values from properties. It is not available for custom features, but is available in custom tables. Get property has the required parameters for entity and property type. Set the entity to the part in the cycle and leave the property type as name. Repeat this for description and vendor, but change property type to description and vendor respectively. Now that all of the variables are assigned, add the values to the row for the current cycle. Use the append function to add a row to the rows array. Define a row using the table row function. It is defined as a map using the internal IDs you defined in the column definition. Finally, the default return value for the table does not need to be changed. It takes in three arguments, the name of the table, values for the columns, and values for the rows. Access the custom table in the flyout menu to the right in the part studio. Additional custom types are helpful if you want operators or standard and custom functions to operate differently based on the data type. In the standard library, there is already an object for a line. It has an origin and direction, but no endpoint. If you had the need to create and manipulate line segments that have an origin and endpoint, you might want to create a new custom type with overloads for how operators and the debug function execute with the new type. Custom types require a type declaration and a predicate function as top-level constructs. The type declaration includes both the type name and predicate name as a type check. The predicate checks that the arguments are appropriate for the custom type. Like all type checks, it is not checked unless monitoring is on for performance reasons. Start a new feature studio. Create a type declaration for a line segment. Create a predicate for the type check. A line segment must be an array with exactly two vectors. Each vector must represent a point in 3D space. Check this by looping through both points with a for loop. Use the is3d length vector function to check that they are both three component arrays with units. When you create a custom type, you should add a function or several overloaded functions that convert common inputs to the new type. Create a new function named line segment. 
It takes in two arguments, point zero and point one, that are vectors. It combines them into an array and casts the array as a line segment in the return value. Create a new custom feature and name it line segment. Create a constant named segment1 and set it equal to the result of a line segment function. Enter two 3D vectors with units as the arguments. Add a debug to show the segment. In the Part Studio, nothing displays in the model space and the line segment prints as a difficult to read map in the Feature Script Notices panel. Debug provides more meaningful information when two 3D points are entered as separate arguments. Add a debug overload as a top level construct. It takes in two arguments for the context and a line segment. Add a statement that executes a debug that separates out the two points from the line segment array. Now, the part studio shows a line in the model space. The point vectors and the distance between them print in the feature script notices panel. It is important to consider all functions and operators that need to be overloaded so that they execute in a way that makes sense for a new custom type. Add a new constant named segment2 and set it equal to segment1 multiplied by 2. Add a debug function to show the result. In the Part Studio, it fails because the multiplication operator does not know how to handle line segments. Add an operator overload to the Feature Studio. Declare it with an operator followed by the symbol with no space. Add arguments as you would for a function. It takes in two arguments for a number and a line segment and returns a line segment. Use the line segment function in the return value and complete the appropriate multiplication in each of the arguments. The line segment could be the first or second argument, so repeat the operator overload for both scenarios. Now, the Part Studio shows the new line segment without error. You could continue adding more overloads for how operators and functions interact with line segments, but we won't continue in this example. Feature Script is responsible for generating all on-shape geometry, and as such, performance optimizations play an important role in feature usability. This will not necessarily dictate how long it takes for a Part Studio to regenerate. It is one component of the entire regeneration process. The main ways to improve feature performance include function efficiency, handling recalculations, and loop management. It is helpful to understand what parts of the script are taking the longest. Copy the public document fader linked in the key takeaways for this video. In the pull-down, select Profile Part Studio 1. Profiling puts hoverable markers on the left-hand side of the code lines. The darker the color of the marker, the larger the percentage of the execution time it takes. In addition to this, there are functions you can use to evaluate the execution time of a group of actions. Create a start timer with the name operations before the operation functions. Then, at the end of the loop, use printTimer with the same name. You can see the entire for loop takes 367 milliseconds to execute. Keep in mind that all timings can change every time the feature regenerates in the Part Studio. To speed up a custom feature's execution, use the Profile Part Studio capabilities to find the most computationally expensive operations. The sort function takes the longest due to the high number of distance evaluations and comparisons done in feature script directly. In this case, the tolerance sort function is faster, primarily because it only calls EV distance once per array element. 
It is also more robust to floating point error in the measured distances. This performance improvement becomes more noticeable with larger arrays. Where the original sort function took around 200 milliseconds, the tolerance sort function only takes 20. In part studios, it's recommended to prioritize space patterns over part patterns and part patterns over feature patterns. In feature studios, when looping a section of code that generates geometry, it's more efficient to create a set of transforms and apply them with the op pattern function once at the end, rather than repeating the original features. Similarly, instead of executing separate operations on several sub-entities, such as op boolean or op delete bodies, it is faster to create a composite query of all the entities to modify and do one operation outside the loop. In the fader document, create an empty array variable outside the for loop called spear bodies. Copy the query from the op boolean command and add it to the spear bodies array by using the append command, creating a list of queries corresponding to the generated spears. Now move the op boolean outside the for loop and for tools, create a queue union that combines the list of generated spheres into one large query. Lastly, change the ID of the Boolean command to remove the index that was needed when running in the for loop. An important aspect of performance optimization is avoiding unnecessary recalculations, particularly for expensive evaluations. Fetching values from imported part studios, constructing paths, and evaluating complex queries, among other things, can all add up quickly if repeated multiple times. When possible, calculate and store results for future use, significantly reducing computation time and boosting overall performance. In this custom feature, we check if a target radius is positive before attempting to generate a sphere. It computes the same evaluation twice per point, once in the if statement and the second time in the sphere generation. Copy the formula out of the conditional and create a new variable named target radius. Replace both instances of the formula with target radius. Viewing the profiler, we can see the regeneration time has been reduced by about 70% with a few changes from its original time.